I've struggled a little bit when you're thinking about AI is like, well, why should I even write anymore? Because AI can do this and do it way better than me. And it almost yeah, like, really. but you know, do you know what I mean? Like I, I felt that a little bit cause you're just seeing it like, yeah. Right? And so how did, how does someone get over that maybe, you know? And I, I feel like, okay, that means I really got to focus on the stuff that only I can share that AI can't share. That's, you know, somewhat personal. And I think you and I talked about in the last podcast, that really human connection. Yeah. How do you kind of get people to understand that in a different way when you have access to this stuff, how does it change, you know, our thinking so that we continue doing stuff that pushes our own learning? I think they just have to use it. And, and right. once they try and use it, they're like, Oh, that's really good. Oh, that's not so good. Oh, that's good. And then I think when you just see it, you realize, okay, this is a really good start, but I could do, I can make it better. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really just about using it. I I'm know that with my own teachers. So with AI, it's so funny because I don't even, I, they don't know I wrote a book. Some of them do because they, right. endorse, they I asked some of them to read it first, but um, a lot of them don't know that I wrote a book. And it's ironic that I'm like a, I guess, AI expert and right. Right in front of them. Um, but I try to empower them to be leaders. Like I don't want to stand up at a faculty meeting and them hear me all the time. So right. I know like, okay, Marina's doing this really great thing. Patel's doing this really great thing. And Emma's doing this really great thing. And I'll have a faculty meeting and like do station rotations and the teachers cycle through 10 minutes in each room and see what their colleagues are doing really great. And then it's not me doing it, but also right. they're sharing hey I did this this is what worked this didn't work and now the last few minutes you try it and so they're walking out of each of those three rooms trying something and saying okay this worked this didn't work and I think until you put it in their hands and ask them to to do it no one will no one will notice or see it so I, I'm curious about what you're thinking is on this because I love that you're giving people opportunity and time to utilize it themselves, because this is something I've been arguing forever is that too often what we do is we jump straight to the teaching without doing the learning. Like we just say like, how do we get kids to use this? And it's like, well, you're not even using this. So how do you, if you don't understand it from the viewpoint of a learner, you're going to struggle with this. But this is actually very specifically in the New York area when chat GPT like was all over the place in probably December, maybe even as early as November, 2022, by January, I saw tons of districts in New York, not the state specifically. The city, New York City. Blocking it. Yeah, right? yeah. All and, New York City is like the largest school district in the country. They yeah. block it. So, so like, how how do we how do we uh, how, I guess not how do we how do you how do you get people to kind of see past this because um, I know you you know my brother Alec his big thing is really how do how do you utilize this because a lot of people are concerned about cheating is like. You shouldn't be concerned about cheating. You should be more focused on how does this actually take changing or teaching? Like yeah. that should be the, the big focus. So, you know, if you're, if you're going to block it right away, then your people can still get on their phones. Like it's not like you can't oh, no. have access to it. So like, mm -hmm. how are you getting people like to kind of shift their thinking on this, to go beyond uh, the, one of the best analogies I heard about it is that use it as a second brain, like to kind of see oh. that. So yeah. how, how are you helping that, that shift, you know, kind of, so that schools aren't blocking it. And I know you're doing this work already in your school district, but I know you're working with other schools and, and districts around uh, the world and having conversations. How are you getting them to kind of wrap their heads around it? I think the first part of what I always say is, and I don't like to use the word assessment. I really don't. But when you talk about assessment, if you are assessing the end product, let's call it an essay. That's a really easy example because AI could do that. If you're assessing the end product, AI can just do that. So I think what we need to really re, the, the area that we really need to think about is assessing the learning process. If you are checking in with your students, watching the learning evolve and guiding them throughout their learning process, and you could use project-based learning or flip classroom, or I mean, any of the, the things we know work, um, you wouldn't be really concerned about cheating because you're right. watching, you're, you're watching the learning and you're watching that student develop and learn and grow.